everyone, my name is Sarah D. here at Renzo PG. Welcome to a new video. Today we are talking about MacBook accessories, all things physical, but also digital, like some of the apps I use, some of the apps you should be using if you have purchased a MacBook in the recent past few years. But I know there's some genuine excitement about the new 14 and 16 inch MacBooks because hey, we have ports now, we have the new M1 Max and M1 Pro Apple chips, um, and also they took the touch bar away, which was a little controversial. I hated the touch bar, no touch bar needed. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are excited about the MacBook, so why not make some more videos about it. And shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Their MX Keys Mini is strategically designed for creatives to keep things minimal for maximum impact. It's so cool, it's so cute. It's great for small desks, it's great for people on the go. It also has smart illumination, so even when you get close to it, it lights up, and then when you walk away for a few seconds or take your hands away, it gets dim again. It has smart keys, so you have a dictation key, a mute, unmute, and also more I got really loud. Yeah. I got really excited about the emoji key, guys. Whoa. <clears throat> and most importantly, there's an emoji key! You guys know I've been a huge fan of Logitech keyboards, whether it's their craft keyboard or their G915 mechanical keyboard. Um, what I love about those is it has like a cool spinny input dial. Um, but this, this is made like, it feels like with the same craftsmanship of that craft advanced keyboard that I've used a ton. So um, it is really, you know, a great size, but it's portable, but it also just feels solid. Solid. It comes in really cool colors. So of course you have the black gray option. You also have pink. I love that, like the frosted pink. And the one I haven't unboxed yet is the silver option. Let's do that just like very quickly. Oh, oh, oh. And the great thing about a lot of these Logitech keyboards is they have these like easy switch buttons where if you have multiple devices, you can link them all up with Bluetooth so you can have, say, your MacBook on one, your PC on two, and your iPad on three. You can toggle in between the devices, type away, and it's just super quick. Um, of course, you can also use Sidecar to hook up your iPad with your Mac wirelessly, and then you you know only have to use one keyboard and mouse, but this is really handy for multi-device, and I've actually used it a lot in between PC and Mac because you guys know I am very, well, for the past five years, I've been primarily a uh, PC, but these new MacBooks are getting me over into, into Mac land a little bit more. So it comes with literature. We have literature, and then we have a USB-C to USB-C cable, and that's what is used to charge. Um, and of course, like I mentioned, it's multi-device, so PC, Windows, Linux, Android, iPhone, all of the things. Oh, so many beautiful keywords now, look at this. So if you like what you see, check out my link in the description below for the MX Keys Mini. So obviously we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So I wanted to start with just kind of like Amazon Basics laptop sleeves. They're not super exciting, but you have a lot of different color options. Of course, I just went with black. And these are like, pretty cheap. So the 16 inch, this is a $16 laptop sleeve. And then this guy was only $9.99. When you're ordering a laptop sleeve from one of the fancy brands, you know, you expect it to look clean and functional and it's very soft. But for some reason I was like, you know what? I don't need the fanciest, the fanciest thing. Let's just, let's just go with the cheapest option possible. The $9 Rainier case. Uh, I will say it is just like, two fabrics kind of stitched together. There's not a ton of protection on the bottom. You know, if you, I mean, I wouldn't want to drop the MacBook in these cases at all, but it's just, it's good. If you throw your MacBook in a purse or a bag, you don't want it scratched, you want to carry it around, throw it in your car, it's good, it does the job. This guy, the Masiso version, the $6 more version, seems like it does have more protection. So you have two different types of fabric, you know, the soft squishy on the front, but then the layer on the outside that feels like it could combat maybe a little bit of rain. I wouldn't put this out in the rain, but you know, if it had some liquid on it, um, it, it could handle. And then it also has a front pocket to put like hard drives or maybe even a charger. So I'm actually a bigger fan of guys just splurge, maybe spend the extra four to five dollars um, and get this version. Okay, so I understand we didn't start with the most sexy topic of like MacBook sleeves, but I always wonder when I see those like really cheap ones on Amazon, like are they good quality? and they're fine, they work out fine. I would suggest if you have a nice laptop and you want some flair, go to Etsy. I bought this off of Etsy probably 
six years ago, a really long time ago. And it's just stayed with me. It, it's like such a nice little like mini briefcase. Again, it doesn't offer a ton of protection just cause it's like a few layers of felt, um, but it's more unique because it was, you know, one individual person who made it. And the latches have stayed solid over the years. It has like a nice little um, leather hit at the bottom to just carry it. And it feels good to like, just, you know, support like a creator. Probably the most important accessory for MacBook or just laptops in general, if you're a creator on the go. I don't know why I did that. Keep it. Okay. Creators on the go who have photo, video, content, and you're probably gonna fill up that one to two terabytes of storage eventually, so you need fast hard drives externally. Well, let's talk SSDs, because the thing is, and I'm sorry I have to say this uh, so many times, there's a big difference between going the SSD route and the traditional hard drive route. If you just go to Amazon, you type in hard drive, you're gonna get normal disk spinning hard drives and then you're gonna get SSDs. The biggest difference is these SSDs are going to be speedy. They're going to be comparable to the speeds that you're getting off of the SSD from your actual computer, right? They're not all the way there, but they're the closest you're gonna get. And so that is so key. If you actually video edit off of external hard drives, if you photo edit off of external hard drives, you're gonna have much better luck if you choose an SSD over a normal hard drive. Now, those Lassie rugged hard drives um, or other brands are fantastic for cheap storage. If you need to access it every now and then, copy and paste. Um, maybe you're using those for like backups. It's really great for that. And I love those rugged edges because um, I drop things a lot. So those are good for backups, storing things. Um, but I wouldn't recommend those for like actively editing off of them. Now, Lassie actually now does have their different version of these small SSDs, um, but there's a lot of great versions out there, the Samsung T7, and then these are actually new. These are really cool. This is the new Crucial X8, um, and it's a really great size. It's thin. They're the same exact price as a Samsung T7s, and they're super fast, reaching up to 1,050 read-write speeds. Um, and you know what's kind of cool that what they did is they come with, you know, one USB C to USB-C cable, but then they just, they have this little dongle that you put on top of the USB-C to turn it into USB-A. Um, so I'll put some options for SSDs, but I just recommend SSDs. They're super thin, light, portable and fast and they come in at a price that's actually not terrible like these are each 119 dollars for one terabyte um and wow back in my day i'm not going to start that again but storage has gotten cheap thank goodness okay so let's talk monitors for a second i was hoping you know we're about to reach 2022 that we were going to have more 5k 2k options um we, we've had a great sprint of like ultra wide monitors um and just big wide monitors but the only downside with that is the resolution actually isn't the best so you know once you start actually looking closely to text you're like ah it's a little blurry that's not as sharp as i would like it right so for my pc setup at the condo i basically have two lg ultra fine monitors i basically went with a 27 inch i just need a normal 169 display um, it works well with my teleprompter and two display gaming setup type thing um, and then i love my ultra wide displays and i actually went with their 34 uh, inch ultra wide that is not curved um, and I'm enjoying those, you know, they're not the most like color accurate or um, resolution dense, but they come with their air ergo, what are they called? Like their ergo monitor stands where you can like rotate the displays and you have a lot of like versatility on what you can do like right out of the box. Um, I like that it comes with an actual clamp stand uh, that goes on a desk instead of just a stand that takes up a lot of space. Um, here at the office, we do have the classic LG 27 inch ultra find that was like the MacBook display that features a webcam um, is 27 inches. It definitely has a ton of bezels, but that was like, again, the MacBook display like four or five years ago. I think everyone's just kind of like waiting for that like official display to update because that's one of the few that Apple features on their website. Um, so I kind of wanted to feature it with this MacBook because it is very pretty glossy display, but I think everyone's like, all right, when is that coming out? Uh, the Mac display market is kind of slacking right now. You think we're all gonna buy $5,000 XDR displays? 
I know I'm talking about this place probably too much, but I do spend a lot of my wee hours in the in the morning watching YouTube videos and kind of researching displays. I always end up with LG for some reason. I mean, their ultra wides have been awesome. So I think that's one of those like brand loyalty things where you buy one, you like it, you just stick with it, right? So when it comes to the Mac, right? The best choice for um, wireless earphones is probably the AirPods, right? These have the peachy pod cases on them. These are my favorites, the AirPod Pros. I usually, uh, you know, I, I use iPhone a lot, but the uh, computers I've used mostly in the past years have been PCs. And I use AirPods with PCs, you know, they're just Bluetooth headphones, you can connect them to any computer. But it wasn't until I started using this MacBook more where I'm actually very annoyed with the feature where AirPods automatically switch in between, um, you know, Apple devices. So I'll be on the MacBook, I'll be on a Zoom or something and I'm using my AirPods. And then I go to my phone to look at something and hey, sometimes during calls I scroll on Twitter, okay guys, but then a video will pop up and the AirPods will switch to my phone. And I'll be like, what? oh God, I can't, I can't hear the Zoom call anymore. So I've actually turned off the auto switching on all devices. You go into basically the Bluetooth settings of the AirPods. AirPods need their own app, by the way. When are we gonna get that? So I basically switched that off. Uh, AirPods have actually gotten more annoying since I switched to the MacBook, um, but AirPods, it's just, it's kind of the default. They sound great. I do most of my phone calls on them. Um, but when it comes to video editing, whether I'm on me, whether I'm on the PC or the MacBook, I always go wired. So um, these are the cheapest earphones ever. They're just the normal AKG earphones that come with uh, Android devices, but they fit my ears so well. And I think they're just like a normal flat sound. And um, they're like very comparable to probably what, you know, the audience will listen to my videos with. Um, so I don't like to do videos with fancy headphones because that's not how you're gonna listen to videos, right? Um, so it's probably the most comparable to how you guys listen to it. When it comes to headphones, these are kind of similar. They're they're obviously a little bit more expensive because they're like decent headphones, but these Sony ones, the MDR7506, these are kind of just like the classic headphones. Like you, you see them in music studios, um, you, you see them like everywhere, so it doesn't matter how fancy you are. These $70 headphones, like a lot of people use them just because they're reliable. They, they don't overdo it on the bass or the treble. They're just balanced. And I think that's why people really like them. Um, these are probably like the fourth pair I've had because I've used them for like the past decade. They're just like, they're solid. Okay, let's run through some quick stuff. These Zeiss lens wipes. They're like, Sarah, what are you talking about? This is, are we doing like a Lysol commercial now or something like wipes? What's going on? Guys, these are huge. They are lens wipes. They're great for wiping the glass of your, your lenses, but they are so good at cleaning off your displays. They get all the smudges away. They make your screen look beautiful. I've always used them for this. Maybe we should check before we post this video if it like hurts displays or something. It's too late. It's too late. It's destroyed. Well, this is what, how you, what you've always been doing. I've right? always used it. It's, it's never messed up anything, but these are so clutch for all, all devices and you can trust cleaning your camera lenses with it as well. Um, dongle City, I use ethernet actually still, so I do have to keep a dongle on me. This is the, oh, what is this brand? I like this brand, Ivanki. You know, it has USB-C, HDMI, ethernet. That's the only reason why I use it. I should probably get a smaller dongle now. Yay, we have ports on the MacBook, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, and the last physical object, um, this is definitely, you know, the stuff that I actually use, so I know it might not be like the latest and greatest, but it's just my favorite stuff, right? So these are the two Logitech mouses I usually use. This is the one at home that I have. This is the MX Master 3. Um, it's really comfortable. Also a Logitech product, so um, shout out to the homies. And then this guy right here, this is my favorite portable mouse. So when we talk about laptops, you know, if, I were to travel again. I mean, I come to the office, my apartment, I go back and forth. So this is the kind of gear that I bring with me. But if you're traveling, you probably really don't wanna bring a big mouse with you. It's really not that much trouble. But if you want a smaller one, this uh, MX Anywhere 2S is just, it's my favorite mouse ever. Now, this is one generation back. So I'm not actually sure if they still sell these, but it's my favorite, my absolute favorite, because it has horizontal scroll where if you can see, you can push left to right on the actual mouse. See, it goes left and right. 
and that does horizontal scrolling. So when I'm editing in Resolve, you know, I'm scrolling in the timeline vertically, but that horizontal scroll is so clutch when navigating a video timeline. Um, and the fact that you have that functionality in such a small mouse is so huge. And then, you know, this button I map to basically the app ex expose so I can see everything. And then you have the forward and back buttons. Um, so because it is a little bit older of a mouse, it charges um, via mini USB, not USB-C, but this is tried and true, man. That horizontal scroll. Okay, so time to talk about software. Let's start with a few I've mentioned before, but they're just so good, I have to mention them again, okay? So we have Alt-Tab. On the Mac, basically pressing Command-Tab allows you to switch in between the apps that you have open. But on PC, you actually see a preview of those apps open. And coming back to Mac after PC land, I was like, man, I missed that. So I looked up and found the app Alt-Tab, and it's really cool because now you basically press Option-Tab, and you can preview the apps that you're toggling in between. So now you actually see the preview of each app like that, instead of when you command tab, you just get the app icons. See, this is much better than the other option. And then basically if you wanna switch, say I wanna go um, to Twitter, you navigate to it basically by pressing option tab, let go, it takes you to that new window. And then another thing from Windows is Windows management. So for Mac, it's fine, it's just not as snappy, right? So say I want to have this window that I have full screen with another Chrome window that I have just on my main screen. So in order to do that, I have to come over here, I have to exit full screen, and then basically I hold down this green button, and then it says tile window to left of screen, and then you choose what you want on the right. That's fine, okay? But that's just too many steps. So like over in Windows, I basically want a shortcut to do that. Um, so there's an app called Magnet. You just download it on the App Store. I think it's like a few dollars. It might be $9.99, I'm so sorry. Um, but basically option control right, snaps that window to the right. Option control left snaps the window to the left. And another thing I do all the time to full screen a window is just snap it to the top like that. Um, and as you can see, it worked on Mac because I have that magnet app. Um, that's something that just naturally you do in Windows, but you can't do without that magnet app. I can't tell you how many times until I downloaded this app on my Mac, I would just grab uh, tabs and like slam it to the top without it actually doing that. So that's very satisfying to see now that I have it there. Okay, the last piece of software I would love to share it with you is called Things. It is a to-do app. Um, you guys know, if you've been around the channel, I've never been satisfied with any sort of to-do app or method of doing it, uh, you know, writing it down in the physical space or any digital apps. I tried a Notion since that's where we keep our database of videos and sponsors and the everything else about my life is in Notion, but to-dos just didn't work in there. And it wasn't until I tried out these cards called Analog. So it's uh, by a really cool guy. Uh, he runs a brand, Ugmonk, uh, makes really cool stuff. And they're basically these physical cards. I wish I had them with me, but that was why the physical card thing didn't work out because I would just always forget them. Then I was like, oh, I need, I need something on my phone. I need something on devices that I have. But it started this process of me writing to-dos, scratching out to-dos every day. And it had this same kind of breakdown of like, what do you do today? What do you have upcoming? And then what do you want to do someday? So it had a very similar format to things, uh, the digital version of it. So sorry, Jeff, I basically use your product analog as a way to like train my brain to then do the same thing digitally and then just hopped over to someone else's app. But doing it in the physical really helped me get in that state of like, okay, I have a minimum amount of tasks per day to do because there's only a few lines, right? Scratch them off and then move the rest to the next day and then if you have these someday bigger goals, keep those separate because um, you know you need to worry about day-to-day -day tasks and you don't need to be worrying about the big stuff, right? So it wasn't until I did that in the physical that I was like, wow, let's go back to the Things app. So I first downloaded it on my phone and now uh, I have it as a Mac app, so I had to buy it separately. But it is just, it's super handy. So um, this is left over from when I used it probably like two or three years ago. So it's kind of funny because I have like old projects like Switchboard, Nope, this inbox, basically I have a lot of random things to do that I, I should probably look back on, but I need to go through all these and delete, but I basically just started with the today view and that's everything that I have to get done today. Hold on, I gotta clean this up real quick. This is in 
embarrassing. See, I do things, but I don't check them off, and that's the funnest part. Why don't I remember to do that? The coolest part about this app, too, is you can have to do's within a to do. See how I did that? Like it collapses, but you double click. So you got check marks within a check mark, and then you can also put more notes here. Um, that's really cool. So basically, the method to the madness is when you have a to do in your head, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Put everything in your inbox. This is where you start from, right? So you put everything into your inbox. There's a lot of stuff here, again, because this is from past Sarah. It's really weird to like see Sarah three years ago and what was, what was on her mind, right? So you put everything in the inbox and then when you want to make it actionable and you're like, I'm ready to do this today, right? You can either assign it to a calendar date you can click here and it'll pop up in your today inbox on that assigned date. Or if you're like, I need to move this to today, you click the today button or you star it on your phone. It's a little bit faster on your phone and it moves it to your today inbox. So the inbox is like everything today is, hey, I gotta get this done today. Upcoming is really handy because it coordinates with your calendar. This is what is so handy. When I wake up every morning, the first thing I check is my calendar. And then if I go to the Things app and I look at my to-dos, I see my to-dos for today, but then at the top is where it pulls in the information from my calendar and it keeps all of my uh, calendar dates up above so I can keep that in mind. And having that, that, that's actually the biggest thing that I did not appreciate three years ago because I probably didn't use my calendar now I use GCal for like everything and Apple Cal or whatever. Having those two things in the same place is actually clutch for me. So the, the fact that it integrates with my calendar is, is a big deal. I still need to set it up on my Mac. Your anytime view is basically your today views, but then also the ones that we just dragged over that are anytime is chill, right? But then it also puts your different project to do's here um, that you basically see on the left side of things. We'll get to that in a second. And then you have someday, this is just another to-do list with your someday big goals that you can later then grab and drop wherever you want them. Move them today, move them to inbox. Um, I would maybe move it to the inbox when you're thinking about getting it done, right? Your logbook is really cool because you can see when you checked things off. This is really great to be like, I've been productive. Good job. Or if you had some important information stored in that to-do, you can still access it. And then over here you have groups. Now this is really cool because it's just like, it's kind of like Notion, where Notion is like pages inside pages inside pages. Things is to-dos inside to-dos inside to-dos. So Sarah Peachy, we can uncollapse this here and we have micro, Instagram posts, video ideas. And as you can see, how many you have checked off basically gives you the status um, with that pie over here with the circle. And then when you click on the bigger folder, Sarah Peachy, it basically has the number of to-dos inside of it. So um, it's just it's just really cool. So the Things app is really just for me and it helps me organize my thoughts. But as you can tell, it's pretty powerful if you wanna use it um, for bigger projects, but really, Everything I do lives up here. Inbox today, upcoming anytime, someday. And then that, that you know, collaboration with my calendar is huge. I really don't use um, all of these down here. Okay, that was a lot. I love how I'm always like, I didn't even mention the iPad. Okay guys, here's the thing, here's the thing. Very quickly, another setup you could do is basically use your iPad via sidecar and use it as a second screen for your MacBook. Oh, my 11 inch looks so cute next to the 16 inch. So basically, if you go to display preferences, add display Sarah's iPad, um, and hopefully that shortcut will now show up on my dock, boom. We basically have a second display for my MacBook, I'm gonna go into the display settings, this iPad, um, show touch bar, I do not need. And then I don't wanna show sidecar either, I just want a full screen. Boom, look at this. Oh, awesome, the magnet settings work here too, just cause it's acting like a second display for my Mac. And boom, you got a two display setup, this is great. You can also mirror your display, so if you're doing a presentation, we can say, hey, I want this iPad to mirror um, this camera. You guys are the audience. And then I can present something like this. So I could be like, hey guys, we need to go through this inbox. Hey, we did that, we did that. Um, but you're seeing everything that I'm doing on this screen, on that screen. And you know, sometimes I have my iPad set next to my PC and having 
shout out, a keyboard that can switch in between devices is really handy because um, I can literally use the Logitech Flow to go in between the screens, um, but also switch the keyboard via the device switches one, two, and three, set it up, connect to the iPad, to the PC, toggle in that way and then type away on each device. Cool. Guys, we covered so much ground in this video. Holy smokes. Like, I feel like my, my throat is a little sore from talking, but I love when I figure out things with my process. So I'm really excited about the things app, but I'll update you in a few months to see if it sticks. Cause to do apps literally never stick for me to do pro it's just, it's, it's a human problem. I'm a mess, right? Thank goodness for Notion. I can at least have some of my life organized, right? Okay, guys, we talked about a lot of things. Everything is linked down in the description below. Shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Their MX Keys Mini. Oh, so cute. Looks so good. Is so functional. You should check it out in the description below. Um, I'll try to link as many things in the description below as well. That's it. Let me know if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. Hopefully you learned something. Okay, until next time. Stay peachy. Okay, bye.